Welcome back to the channel. Karen here for Ozone Fine Art Ventures. We're checking out some amazing petrified woods today. Unfortunately, we couldn't take you on the expedition itself. It was a private property. And so to, to keep that on the uh, private side, we're going to just show you the material that we got. I can tell you that it's in Lynn County to give the provenance to the petrified wood. And so we're gonna clean off some of these pieces and see what we were able to get. The West Cascades of Oregon are littered with petrified woods, and there are plenty of mysteries they hold inside. Lucky for us, there was an abundance of silicates and local events historically to create petrified wood for us to find and wonder about. Volcanic events, floods, and other natural occurrences create opportunities for the trees to fall and be sealed in sedimentary soils, petrify over time, and then be released again through erosion or other situations for us to figure out. Okay, they're pretty rinsed off, and we have a beautiful array of wood here. And we have a couple things like this right here is, it appears to be a large chunk of quartz. And over here we have a very large uh, chunk of what I believe to be malachite and quartz also. And I'm not entirely sure if those two are local or if they were imported from someplace else. But the rest of this is definitely local. It came out of the ground. Um, and it is very nicely petrified. Some of this I'm gonna obviously have to hit with the hose better. But what I wanted to do is at the very least uh, get them rinsed off enough so that you could see how this stuff is put together. It is a uh, large format and a lot of it appears to be really, um, you know, uh, wavy and, and has some some really neat green patterns kind of like cypress or juniper and that sort of thing we're going to do some tests later that will help us to find out exactly what kinds of woods these are of course that's part of you can see that a lot of this material has red mineralization this one's pretty squirrely get that into the light but i'm hoping that you can see how jaspery and agaty it is glassy stuff there's typically a rind on the outside kind of like this here that looks you know it's it's got poorer quality and then you've got what's on the inside. This piece. So you can see that there's some outrageous color going on here. Let's bring this piece up and into the light. So you can see this one has this incredible large grain texture. You can see those waves going across this face of it and they're worn. So it doesn't feel like this broke just yesterday into this piece that it is eroded and you have to wonder what the story is. Was it part of the floods that entered the Willamette Valley? Did it come down and become sort of eroded itself? Uh, as things were, were coming uh, down into the valley from the Cascades. So it's really interesting to look at, at these specimens that came out of the ground. Oh, that's, that's actually really nicely representative of its grain. You can imagine this was a big tree 
It's got really pretty colors of permineralization and I wish you could tell us your story. We're going to, to get into some of them so that we can find out what colors they have in them. Here's another one. And this looks really tumbled. So if I had found it in a river, I would have felt like that was completely normal, but these came out of the ground. And so what is the story for them? They must have been in a river before they got buried. You can see how agony that is, or jaspery. We're going to cut some of these and get past their, their rinds and get into what they look like on the inside. This is a good example of, you can see this, this dry rind and then look at how gemmy the insides are very agatized just carnelian and deep colors in there it's the other side of it and then even the opaque stuff that that deep red very pretty so it will be interesting to see how these end up as I was talking getting. about how wavy this material is you know you have to wonder if you've got limbs or if you've got you know roots root balls look at this guy Oops, sorry <laughs> that is gnarled is this a burl of course if you're watching and you know especially if you're familiar with the uh, material that's coming out of the Willamette Valley like the Sweet Home stuff. Get that out in the sun a little bit better. Uh, if you're familiar, let me know what you think some of this material is. If you've got some, some similar stuff that say you've had tested, look at that. I mean, I'm really getting my first look at a lot of this as well. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at those great grains. Oh my gosh. That is such a neat pattern. Put that down, hopefully in the sun. Look. I mean, that would be a cool fresh wood piece, let alone the fact that this is a rock. <laughs> so cool. I like the one that's underneath it too. Looks like a big log. Yeah. So we're going to cut some of these to see what's inside. See how jemmy they are. Because, like I said, the outsides don't reveal their beauty very much. Especially partial to this. I think we'd have to get out the big megalodon 20 inch saw for some of these pieces. This is like a great big burl or something. That's all petrified wood. I mean, look at, there's my hand. That is, that is a big chunk. Well, by my standards, I know some of y'all have pieces of petrified wood you could sit in, but I don't. <laughs> all right, so let's get to the saw. This wood does not disappoint. There are crazy tiger stripes in the grains of this one, so we're cutting another slab to make a pair. I sped up the footage about 20 times. This is Agate and Jasper, so it takes a bit of time. But wow, how worth it. Those grains are simply amazing. So cool backlit. 
Of course we had to toss it under the microscope. This is magnified 100 times. You're seeing one of those tiger stripes in all of its cellular glory. If you ask me, this should be hanging in an art gallery. This is the cross section of this particular wood, or the transverse cut. Just gorgeous. Here's another neat piece. It really looks just like a tree limb that got smoothed slick, like how one would in the water. The inside shows the colors of what the fresh fractures of the rock composition would look like. That's quite a contrast. Let's see what it looks like inside. Wow, incredible iron staining and maybe a box stain? That was a surprise. I wonder what it looks like under the microscope. This is another cross section of wood or transverse cut. You can see the margins of the growth rings. Smaller cells for the cold season, larger cells for the warm times. Almost looks like a knit sweater. I'd wear that. We started at 40X, then 100X. You can see both the variety of cell size, the way that they're stacked, but also crystals that have grown here and there outside the standard cellular replacement. That's all super cool, but what kind of wood is it? I'm not sure, and I'll tell you why in a sec. Meanwhile, we're going back out to the wood pile to get a few samples that we can draw an identification out of. What I need is something with really nice cellular replacement, recognizable features, and a thick enough sample that I can take the necessary cuts. This is really nice, really pretty in fact, but a little advanced. Check out these lovely grains under the microscope at 100x. Okay, this piece is perfect. There's plenty of room for the cuts, and it's got great, big, fabulously preserved cells. I think we have a winner here. So why not just any old piece of petrified wood? Well, I'm pretty new at this identification game, so coming up with a magical ID for some of these would be like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Check out that structure. Those are some great grains. Those of you who work wood are very familiar with this view. It's crazy too, working with the petrified wood feels very much like working regular wood, complete with going with the grain, splits, and splinters. So out of all that cutting, I have cut the three directions of the wood. The tangential side, the transverse or cross section, and the radial section. You can see with the 40X radial section, it looks so different to our sweater that was a transverse view. This is more like fine linen. You can see the way it seems to cross weave in the 100X slide. Important information is gathered from the configuration of these cells when a thin section is created. We're not quite there, but we can tell a lot from what we see. Here we have the tangential or cross-section view. This is when you can see the growth rings. We can see the margin, and these cells are also different than our sweater. Definitely a different species. Also noting the larger cells are mostly alone, not paired. That's a clue for us. This is when I got totally pumped. Well, as pumped as you can get looking at petrified wood under the microscope. This is the tangential view. You can see really cool rays. Those are the spongy looking sections as opposed to the lasagna looking layers. In those spongy rays, those tiny cells there tell us a heap about what this species is. Here we have a bunch of them together with an array structure. In say cedars, they are single file in array or unisariate. What all did she just say? It amounts to those details we observed in the wood pointing to its species. With those clues, this very well may be maple. I've seen quite a bit of conifers, but this is my first maple and that's really exciting. Want to hear something else exciting? Hey, thank you for being so patient. It's time for the giveaway. So I've got my hat here and we're going to find out who is going to win. I gave you a ton of chances and I'll have another giveaway soon. So if you don't win this one, I'll give you another chance yet again. So let's see. Oh, a rabbit. Who knew that a rabbit would be in my hat? All right. <laughs> Drum roll. 
And the winner is Paul Watson. Congratulations. And go ahead and email me at ozonefineart.com. We'll exchange some information so that I can send you a package full of some of the things that we found on prior videos, some slabs that I've cut in the studio that you guys have watched, goodies from the Oregon coast, and some other surprises. Like I said, we'll be having another giveaway pretty soon. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so that you'll get the notification about when that happens. Thanks again for watching and back to the video. We literally only scratched the surface on these petrified woods, and yet we've seen some really beautiful grains and interesting microscopic views. It's exciting we have a possible ID on the maple, and there's a bunch of fun research to come. We'll be cutting some of those bigger chunks in an upcoming video, as well as more microscopy to learn more about these mysterious woods. Until then, thanks for watching. For more information, check out ozonefineart.com and keep creating.